I want to welcome you to this very special time of reflection together. We are going to be journeying uh, with one another through uh, the events of the night and the day when Jesus was betrayed, crucified, and buried for us. I want to encourage you to get a Bible, a translation that you like to read and understand well, because we're going to be reading together um, each passage uh, that talks about the different events of that night and that day. And I want to encourage you to do so with a deep sense of uh, attention and thanksgiving uh, to the words contained in Scripture as we go through them together. Before each uh, passage of Scripture, I'm going to offer a short uh, introduction uh, to that passage of Scripture. And then following that, there's going to be on the screen a, a picture, an image, uh, that you can pause the video there. And that'll kind of be an image for you to be able to uh, see and reflect on that represents the, the, uh, the moment that we're reading about in Scripture. And then there will be a short prayer after each of those sections that you can just pray together as a family, or if you're there on your own, you can pray uh, to God there on your own, just reflecting on what we've read in his word together. At the end of our time together, we're going to be uh, partaking of communion together. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to also have uh, your juice and your bread uh, there with you so that when we get to that point, um, we can go ahead and take um, the communion together. So let's go ahead and pray together, and then uh, we can listen to the song together, and then we'll begin uh, with our first passage of Scripture. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be together at this time. We're so thankful for what you've done for us through Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his resurrection on our behalf. And Lord, today as we gather together, we just ask that you would speak to us through your word, that we might be moved by it, that we might be drawn closer to you, closer to Christ who gave his life for us. So be with us now. May your Holy Spirit just enlighten our hearts and our minds and open us up to what you want to say to us. And Lord, may we be responsive uh, to your spirits moving. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's listen together now to the song, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. And please pay close attention to the words. safe to 
Our first passage of scripture we're going to read together is found in John's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus gathered with his disciples on the night when he was betrayed. John's Gospel records what Jesus said and did on that night in chapters 13 through 17. Jesus there offered instruction, hope, encouragement, and challenge to his followers in those chapters. And then he turned his attention toward the brutal task which lay ahead, beginning first with his betrayal by Judas Iscariot. As you read these words, consider the contrasts, Jesus' love, Judas' betrayal, the darkness of the night, the light of the world, the chaos of the scene, and the inner resolution of the Savior. Would you go ahead and when the image pops up, you can uh, pause it and then read together uh, John chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. And now I want to encourage you to spend just a few moments in prayer reflecting on what we've just read together. Ask God to help you better apprehend and consider the terrible reality of the events of that night and day. And ask him to help you embrace the Savior who laid down his life for you and for the entire world. Would you take a moment and pray? And now our next passage, John's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 12 through 27. Think about this. Fear. Real fear. Seeing how quickly a crowd can turn against someone as innocent as Jesus, much less somebody as rough and tumble as Peter. As you read the next account, can you imagine how Peter must have felt? He could very well be one of the next ones who had to have his life snuffed out, as he was one of the most outspoken followers of Jesus. And yet, consider the inner turmoil that must have driven Peter to his denials. Maybe it was something like this. I just said I would never deny him, but what good does it do to admit that now? If I deny him, maybe I'll have a chance to do more good later. But I do believe he is the Son of God. What should I do? Maybe now is not the time, but maybe I need to say something, stand up for him. In the end, as we'll see, fear won out in Peter's heart. That's something that would drastically change just a few weeks later, but for the moment, Peter gives way to fear. And then consider the high priest Caiaphas's questioning of Jesus. Notice how those who would twist the scripture and truth are always more concerned with their own narrative than they are with real truth. Go ahead now and read John chapter 18, verses 12 through 27. Now that you've read, would you pray a short prayer, asking God to help you overcome the fear, any fear you may have in following him, and asking him for his help to remain firmly grounded in his word, and in his truth. Would you pray now? And now let us reflect on our next section of scripture, John chapter 18, verses 28 through 40. A palace and two kings. Earthly power meets divine restraint. Pilate seeking to excuse himself of guilt, Jesus taking upon himself the sin of all the world. Consider what must have been on Jesus' heart and mind, what he was about to face. Consider Jesus standing before Pilate, fully aware that the only power Pilate had in that moment was granted to him by Jesus' acceptance of his mission. Consider that Pilate speaks for all human powers, craven politicians, false religions, religious leaders, the elites of academia, the secular humanists, the vulgar masses. When Pilate 
derisively asks the mocking question, what is truth? Finally, consider the people who would trade Christ's release for a criminal's. What could lead them to such a decision? Go ahead now and read John chapter 18, verses 28 through 40. And now let's pray again together. Ask God to help you surrender your life, your perspectives, your actions, and your words to his power and his truth. Ask him to help you acknowledge your own sin and your own attempts to excuse yourself of the blame of disobeying him. Seek his forgiveness for the times when you have become careless about your walk with him. Would you spend a few moments in prayer? And now a few thoughts on John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 1 through 16. Think about this. The power of the mob. Collective fear mixed with hate. Adrenaline mixed with violence. Many of those who shouted Hosanna as Jesus entered Jerusalem a few days before now scream crucify him. The power of persuasion. The power of of relativism, the power of scriptural ignorance. Consider what desiring to be accepted by culture, uh, to appease the mob around you, consider what that leads to. We have no king but Caesar. Scriptural morals and beliefs molded by the moment, cast aside by culture. We want nothing to do with Jesus, we want to be our own kings. Consider God looking in sorrow at his creatures and finally acquiescing to them. Not my will, but yours be done. Would you spend a few moments reading together John chapter 19 verses 1 through 16. Would you spend a few moments in prayer? Ask God to help you put his will first above your own. Ask for his guidance and strength to reject the world's opinions and the world's beliefs and instead remain firmly devoted to him during these times of falling away when people seek their own truth, quote unquote, rather than God's truth. Would you spend a few moments in prayer? And now let's turn our attention to John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 16 through 27. The trial, the beatings, and the torture lasted for hours. The crucifixion, the nails in the hands and feet took but a few minutes. And then Jesus hung there on the cross, an unrecognizable, bloody, quivering mass of flesh. It was over now. Their bloodlust exhausted upon the Son of God. Eyes irresistibly affixed to him and averted from him in shame at the same time. Where are you in the crowd that day? Consider what do you see as you look upon the crucified Savior of the world? Sorrow? Shame? Gratitude? Humility? Would you take a moment to read John 19, verses 16 through 27? Would you take just a moment in prayer and ask God to fill you with gratitude for all that Jesus has done for you? And now let's look at Psalm 22, 1 through 18. Very often in scripture, particularly the New Testament, smaller portions of a longer passage of scripture will be quoted. These are not meant to stand completely on their own, but rather to point to the larger passages of scripture behind them. This is the case when Jesus cries out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Read Psalm 22, 1 through 18. And consider the words recorded there as also being 
in the heart and mind of Jesus as he cried out in anguish the opening words of that psalm. Would you read Psalm 22, 1 through 18? And now we will move on to the next scripture before we spend our final moment in prayer. John chapter 19, verses 28 through 37. In Psalm 69, the psalm that Jesus quotes here, it says this, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. Unbeknownst to those gathered there that day, the prophecy of Psalm 69 is then fulfilled, which comes later in Psalm 69. It says this, Jesus' words, You know how I am scorned, disgraced, and ashamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. An earthly king would drink the finest of wines, but those who crucified Jesus cruelly mocked him, offering Jesus sour wine barely fit for commoners. Consider that even the mockery of Jesus, which lasted until his last breath, was fulfilling the prophecies about him contained in scripture. Also, as you read this passage, keep in the forefront of your minds the depth of anguish that Jesus felt as he spoke these words, just as he did when he cried out the words of Psalm 22, which we just read above. As one Easter hymn puts it, it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. Consider what that means for you today as you now read John chapter 19 verses 28 through 37. And now would you pray? Thank God for sending his son Jesus to die for you. Thank Jesus for suffering the punishment for your sins and dying in your place. Offer once again your life in return. And now we come to the time of communion. And even though we're separated by distance, we are united by his spirit. And we're united together in his broken body and his shed blood for us. Would you take the elements there? Maybe you have them placed in front of you. Would you take a moment just to consider each of them? The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he had gathered together with his followers with his disciples and they shared one last meal together and during that meal at one point Jesus took a loaf of bread and he broke it and he passed it around to his disciples and he said this is my body which is broken for you and then after that he took the cup that was sitting there and he said this is the blood of my new covenant with you, which has been shed for you. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, would you do so in remembrance of me? And so now there where you're seated, would you take the bread, pass it around, each one breaking a piece off, and then we'll take together. So take a moment just to do that. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing love the Father turns His face away 
as wounds which my the chosen one bring many sons to glory So this is the body of Jesus, which was broken for us on that cross. Let's take it together in remembrance of him. And then he had the cup and he said, this is the blood of my new covenant with you, which has been shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Let us now partake of this cup together as we share in Christ's crucifixion, so that we can share in his resurrection the blood of Jesus, which is shed for you. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we have this opportunity to gather together. Lord, and we are overwhelmed and overcome, and we can't fully comprehend what it was that you did for us, the sacrifice you made for us of laying down your life willingly on that cross. But Lord, we want to give you all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory for what you've done. You deserve all praise and honor. We thank you for the sacrifice you made. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for your love for us. Lord, may we leave from this time together renewed in our commitment to following you, laying down our lives for you, following you in obedience and in love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final passage is John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. Consider, if you will, the change in heart that Nicodemus, the man recorded here who John's Gospel records earlier, having come to Jesus in the middle of the night because he was afraid of what others would think, now openly brings the body of Jesus down from the cross in order to bury him. Consider the change of heart that had taken place in him. And now as we read together of Jesus' burial, let us wait with hopeful expectation his resurrection by God's power. Truly, he alone is worthy of our praise. Would you spend a few moments reading John 
chapter 19, verses 38 through 42.